Sam Cedar, Emma Viglund, Majority Report, celebrating Michael Brooks' 40th, uh, what would have been Michael Brooks' 40th birthday yesterday. Joining us, Artesia Balthrop. She is a, a TV, film, and video producer. And uh, Artesia, uh, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Good to be here in this celebration. Um, talk about how you became friends with Michael. Because uh, <laughs> I remember you talked about this, I think, at the memorial. And yeah. uh, it, it was uh, a classic. I mean, sort of really, I don't know if people, you know, could see this necessarily on the other end of like uh, uh, of the shows, of, but certainly people who uh, Michael came in contact with on a regular basis, w this dynamic is not going to seem uh, too foreign. Right. Yeah. No, thanks for kicking it off with that question. Cause I actually was just answering some LinkedIn messages <laughs> as I was waiting to come back <laughs> here. Um, so yes, the story is that Michael and I met on LinkedIn um, if you've never developed a relationship on LinkedIn with someone, um, I'm here mm -hmm. to say that it is possible. Um, <laughs> he sent me a, a message one day that was just like, hey, I, you know, I, I see what you're doing. I'm looking at your resume and um, your profile and I like what you got going on. And I would just like to connect with you. Would you be open for a coffee? Um, and it was, you know, just at a time in my in my life, in my career, where I was just kind of going through a transition. And, and I thought it best to, to take coffees with random people from LinkedIn who um, didn't. What was your reaction, though, when he <laughs> did that? Like, I mean, did you like how like were you in I, any way suspicious or like is this I, a phishing scam or like what's going on here? I, I definitely was suspicious because uh, I was I was at a time where everyone wanted to make a television show. And so all of these people wanted to pitch me TV shows. Um, and so I was like, oh, this pitch is interesting. Right. Like he does he politics and, and, you know, on air like this. This is coming from a different angle. So I, I assumed he had a TV show to pitch me. Um, even though I wasn't looking for TV show pitches, I just said, Hey, you know, I'll let him humor me and maybe I'll get a nice coffee out of it. Um, and I walked away with a friend. Uh, that's it, it. That is so classic, Michael, like cold calling, uh, future friends. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. and you were on, um, you were on TMBS a lot. I mean, particularly, I mean, I think you, you were on just weeks before he passed. Um, yeah. and I I was preparing to be on that week when I got the call. Actually, uh, and yeah. what do you think that Michael like? What do you think Michael liked about having you on as a guest so often? Mm, great question. Um, you know, behind the scenes, uh, what I thought about Michael's approach to the show and just like his worldview is, he really believed in um, like a, a think tank model. Um, and he gathered a lot of us together, you know, kind of like parlor room talks and, um, and, and good stuff came out of those conversations, you know, including like the development of, of the show, you know, came out of just us shooting the shit, you know, having, having dinner. Um, and I feel like by having me on, I was, I was a bit camera shy, uh, you know, I was like, I don't really have much to offer. I'm a behind the scenes girl. Um, but I felt like, Michael really wanted to bring those conversations to his audience because those are the conversations behind the scenes that really inspired uh, what he did often and and a lot of how he thought about things. So I was I was very grateful to you know have an on air um, you know presence, but it was really just like having a conversation with my friend, you know, like things we would talk about just while we're having a beer. Um, he, he really did that. I mean, far more than, than, than I has ever, has ever frankly even occurred to me, but I mean, he very much like, uh, continually developed his show with input from everybody around him that he could, could get. Yeah. yeah I wish I had enough, as much time for my friends that I have now as Michael had for like making new friends. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was, you know, genuinely a friend, you know, like they, they added to him. And I was, I was often shocked that I'd walk in rooms with him and I'd be like, you know, that guy, how you that guy, like, where do you know him from? And he's like, oh, you know, just reached out to him and started building, started talking. I'm like, but I don't know that guy. Like, how do you know that guy? How, how, where do you think that came from? 
Uh, I just think he was such a curious person, right? And that curiosity led him to always wonder about about people, you know? Like I, I learned so much about him, but just also about like people by watching him just navigate through through friend groups and, and conversations with, you know, people who don't agree. Um, I've had him in a couple of rooms where I was like, I, you, you kind of lost that fight, but <laughs> now he's your friend, <laughs> now he's your friend. I don't get it, I don't get it, but. No, that was just something that was in him. That's funny. Where do you, um, you know, I think in that last, uh, what, what was, what were you, what, what were you preparing when you were going on to that show that, 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 that show that he didn't make it to because he passed? What, what were we preparing? It was around this time. It was July. Um, we were having a lot of talks about the state of my industry, television and film, and how we were going to come back, you know, amidst COVID, which is, you know, interesting because the conversation we would have right now is the state of my in industry, television and film, and how we would come back, um, you know, after a strike. So. I think I, I remember that being one of our conversations. And, you know, he, he was interested in having people from different industries talk about, uh, you know, their experiences through COVID. I do remember that. So, yeah, I believe that was one of the things we were going to talk about. Um, what, w g give me your sense. I mean, obviously, um, uh, there's a, there's a big writers and, and actors strike right now. I don't know if you're a member of either union, uh, or both for that matter, but, um, do you have a, like, I guess uh, a part of the question is how did Michael's politics change your politics or how did Michael change your politics? But I wonder if um, it also changed your perspective on something like this strike. Yeah. Um, the first question, how did Michael change my, my politics? Um, I think always, you know, being of the left-minded, you know, my entire life. Um, and just, you know, naturally how I grew up and, you know, he always got a kick out of the fact that I went to a Quaker school. Um, so, uh, you know, of course I have that, um, you know, fairness to me. Um, but I feel like how he changed me in my politics is making me a little more um, vocal and stronger with those ideas um, and, you know, not afraid to express them. You know, it was kind of just something that, you know, I lived every day and it was in my head and, you know, I how I moved on a daily basis. And Michael, um, you know, pretty much gave me permission to be radical <laughs> So, um, with those things. Did, did he like push you? And I mean, you're talking about how you were beh uh, behind the scenes uh, mostly and, and that's more of your comfort zone. Like. I mean, the first, the I think maybe the only time we'd met in person was at that live show oh, that right. we did. Oh, yes, right. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, given what you're saying, you being on stage like that maybe didn't come fully, fully naturally in uh, in Philly. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm comfortable on stage, but it's somewhere in my, you know, in what I, I think about my career path was like, I'm a behind the scenes person. <laughs> I make things happen, you know? Um, and he he championed that and he said, yes, absolutely. But also you have a voice. Um, and I think it, you know, it's worth it for the world to hear your voice. Um, and so that, that definitely um, was a, not a change to my politics, but, you know, a, a confirmation to them and, and kind of helped me to, you know, live in this world every day because things are crazy. But um, as far as the strike goes, you know, or just you know existing in the world of 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 content and capitalism and content being king every day um you know i i feel like michael taught me how to will those things for what we felt was good maybe not an overall good right to to everyone but sometimes i as much as i i work in in, in this industry and i i rail against it i still feel like I can use that, use my power and my knowledge and information and years of experience to do some good out there. And, and I definitely was in, have been inspired by Michael with those thoughts. Yeah. Do you have a sense of like what he would, uh, like where he, he would be in his sort of trajectory today in terms of like uh, uh, politics and what he'd be talking about? Um, 
well, first of all, I know he'd be mad as hell a lot. <laughs> um, he'd be mad a lot, right? Um, I think I, his platform would have expanded exponentially yeah. for sure. Um, and I think, you know, I would have I would have convinced him to be a filmmaker. Oh, you would have convinced him to be a filmmaker? Yeah. I would have convinced why, him. Why, why? Why do you think he would be such a good one? Um, well, you know, he, he was just so smart, of course, but he also had, has the, um, the ability to bring players to the table to make something. Um, and with, with all of us here and, and, and our reach and, and our voice and the things that we have to say, I think it would have been a natural direction to, to make a film, like, you know, to say something on a, a really big platform. And then I would have produced it. So. <laughs> that would have worked out well. It would have worked out, right? What um uh what are you working on now? Anything in particular or is it like are we shut down or uh We're pretty shut down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're pretty shut down just like, you know, a couple like trickle ins and and things, but um I was on a, a live, excuse me, I was on a late night show and that was for sure shut down. What so. was that? I was on like a, a late night show and it had a writer's room. So that was shit. Ah, 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 okay. Yeah. I see. Um, and uh, is your perspective on the strike, like, do you think different because of, uh, of, of your experience with Michael or? Um, I don't think it's different. I think, you know, we need to be out here. We need to be striking the amount of money that's being made. Um, the fact that these streaming companies don't disclose any, any numbers, we don't even know what's happening over there. Like, you know, a change is definitely needed. So I'm holding tight. I've been out there um, on the picket lines to support the writers and the actors, uh, cause they're, they're doing the fight for me. I'm not a union member as a producer. Um, so, but they, they hold us up and we all hold each other up, so. Excellent, well, I much don't. appreciated. All right, yeah. Tisha, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, yeah. Great to see you and- yes. um, uh, yes. Well, yeah. we'll, 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 I, I think we're going to be celebrating Michael's birthday in this way, you know, going forward. So, uh, uh, happy we, birthday to him. Indeed. What a All righty. All right. Bye, thanks guys. so much. Thanks, thanks so much. for teasing.